Manic. Manic. Episodes. Hold on. Oh god. Oh god. Here's the thing, folks. If you're noticing, all right, we're not starting yet. Are we starting? Listen, it's kind of my decision whether or not we're going to start. So I'm going to say that we're going to start. Right now, we are in a farmer's market in Fells Point, Baltimore. Lovely place. I am told not to go anywhere outside of this. What a nightmare warning, right? When they're like, oh, man, you're staying in the best part of Baltimore. I can't believe it. That's absolutely beautiful. Please, for your own safety, do not venture two blocks off of that path. I'm literally walking around here on edibles, losing tracks, the track of my left turns. I have no idea if I've walked the two blocks or if I've gone to hell and back. I'm asking people whether or not I'm gonna get murdered and they're just telling me white tops are back up. Oh God, a wire reference, how, how original. Um, yeah, dude, I just waited 45 minutes for a fucking bacon, egg and cheese at a farmer's market. And it's like, I would love I love supporting small business. I am a small business. I'm a boutique business. My wife has a small business. I love people that are trying to make something of themselves and want to earn some money for their family by not working for the man. But I got to tell you, if you take 45 minutes to make a motherfucking bacon, egg and cheese, I promise on Allah, I will go to Starbucks for the rest of my life because what the fuck are we doing? I could make that on a George Foreman grill in six and a half minutes. Why did it take 45? There were three other people also waiting and everybody has to smile like, ha ha. No, we totally get it. We totally get why we're waiting 45 minutes for a bacon, egg and cheese. Small business. We all get it. We all have to be smiley, happy. The people that are cooking are kind of cooking, not really paying attention to cooking are more or less jumping on the PA and saying, thanks for coming to the farmer's market. We're excited. It's like, get back to fucking cooking so I can eat my goddamn breakfast because I am dizzy. Um, not to mention I'm frustrated because I am switching hotels for no reason whatsoever. That's what everybody wants to do, right? They want to interrupt their day. God, I'm such a complainy bitch. Switch it up positive. Boom, bacon, egg and cheese, eat it. Stop being such a little skank and get your energy back up. Next time you see me, I'll be smiles post meal. Oh baby, first ever rain cast. I am out here on the hub uh, in Baltimore and uh, it's raining. There is no way I'm, I should be doing this. My phone is not equipped to take on this type of uh, water or abuse or treatment. Um, it looks as though the walking path is somehow barbed wired off, so I have to find another, another place to go. But man, there is, here's the thing, folks. I know I, had, I ended that last segment bitching, moaning, complaining, per huge, just looking a gift horse in the mouth. There, I'm changing hotels, right? There was something overbooked. It is what it is. Shit happens all the time. Do I take it in stride? No. I am a whimpering, complainy, baby because anytime something doesn't work out completely perfect I think that the world is personally attacking me that there is a reason that there is some sort of embedded algorithm about the name Mike Cannon that makes people feel as though that they can disrespect me but then then my fine folks I do a little bit of inner auditing that guy heard everything I just said and he was so appalled but I uh, I mean is there anything more affirming that a white guy could say is the world is against me? That guy's literally looking at me smoking a cigarette just like, cool, you're in Baltimore. I'm sure that's happening. So yeah, lift, looking at gift horse in the mouth. The hotel is unreal. It's I think where Taylor Swift stays or at least that's the narrative that I'm going to run with. I called Brendan Sagalow. He said that he seems gay enough to know that information. So I'm going to I'm going to decide to believe it totally raining. I'll tell you what, Baltimore is not necessarily a uh, podcast slash vlog friendly town. That is what, this is like a vlogcast. First ever vlogcast. People have done this all the time, but you know what's going to make this different is that it's also going to be available on audio platforms only. Soon enough, maybe by the time this comes out, probably by the time this comes out, if all has gone well, if this just dumps out, just know that I died potentially at my own hands. And in my note, I said, release the episodes, the manic episodes. I've had a good time. Well, it's common knowledge, common, common knowledge amongst my circle, at least that uh, I'm expecting. I personally, not my wife, not my other son. I only am expecting a second child, a second son, another boy. 
Another heir to the throne. Hopefully we don't have a Prince Harry, Prince William situation in terms of their hairline and just overall horse teeth. And uh, you know, I don't know if one of them's racist then, all right, never mind. But uh, I'm excited, I'm very excited to have another, another kid. It's been a long road. If you've listened to me on pods and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying, but it's been a long bloody road to get to this point and God damn it, it feels good to be a gangster and feels good to be in the pocket, feels good to be everything seems to be okay. Classic last words. Oh, let's walk in here where I'm absolutely not welcome. It even says, you guessed it, private property. So there's no way I can go back there. This is like where the lobbyists live, I'm sure. All right, so this statement, this next statement is gonna rely on you guys knowing that I'm kidding. I can't believe I have to say that, but you know, sometimes you gotta let people know that I'm goofing, this is outlandish, I'm kidding. Uh, I think me having two white sons means that I'm actually the most important father or type of father in America. Is that an outlandish statement? Because if you think about it, I think I'm right. What's everybody saying these days? Who's the biggest threat to America? White males. Who's got the key to two of them and their upbringing and shaping them into potential, potential dangerous assets? Me. So who has more of America's future riding on their backs than me? Is it girl dads? No. Listen, they're gonna be, they're gonna be fine. Everything's, everything's moving justifiably in their direction. It's the time of the woman. It's the time of hashtag girl dads. They're the only men that deserve credit. They are the shapers of our women. However, the guys, the guys that shape our white men, I mean, there is a lot of stock riding in our hands and not a lot of respect coming our way. So, you know what happens when that happens. That's my new catchphrase. Oh, somebody last night was talking about it on stage that I'm having another son. And they're like, oh dude, your towels are gonna be history. And it did make me think, because they're right. I, my towels eventually, in, in teen years, will be just probably able to be used as like baseball bats, you know? That's what happens when you're a teen boy, you just absolutely blast one in a thousand count towel, or at least I did. That was my thing. It didn't start that way. My first trip was full tissue, you know, classic. I learned about it in a book. They said, grab some Kleenex. They were a little too, um, they had aloe on them, so a little of that seeped into my pee hole and made me go, oh, which actually I thought was part of the orgasm for the first couple years of my life. Turns out I was just poisoning my dick hole. Then I moved on to, to towels, because I'm an aristocrat. If there's one thing you'll find out about me, it's that your guy likes the finer things. I don't actually, that's the exact lie. But I do like the finer things when it comes to masturbation. That's also a lie. I've gone dry hand for years. I almost rarely use lotion. Isn't that weird? I should do that. Why don't I treat myself? I'm fucking 38, I'm on the road. The, ro the rooms come with lotion, but often they're like minty or have some citrus in it. And it's just like, dude. What are you kidding me? If I have an HPV wart, this thing's gonna feel like a bonfire. Uh, hard towels. Oh, I mean, dude, it did get me to think though. Also weird to bring that up as an audience member where it's like, it's all fun and games. I'm within the pocket. I'm talking jizz, I'm talking kids. I'm mixing and matching. You know how I do. Uh, but um, then somebody was like, oh man, your towels are gonna be destroyed when your kids are teenagers. And at that point, it's like, it's kind of my job to talk about my kid's dick. I don't know if it's yours as an audience member, but I'll roll with it, sure, let's discuss. Uh, and they made a good point. It's ab Whoa, what the fuck kind of bird is that? Oh, it's a duck, just a classic. God, there's nothing more humiliating. Look at this, this is such a beautiful area though, dude. Unreal. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, it did make me think, right, with my sons. I mean, what lobbyist? What fucking, what lobbyist? I mean, it's probably not even anybody that should I cut this whole episode, Nicole? Is that what this is? This episode is gonna be called The Mistake. Mike loses his train of thought several times throughout, completely degrades any sense of humor. So towel, yeah, it did make me think that I should get a Bed Bath & Beyond reward system, like some sort of card, some sort of coupons. I should start saving those because, you know, when I was a kid, I just immediately started going into towels. And once you do that, it's like banging on ecstasy. You're not gonna go back to just sober sex. You're gonna be like, all right, well that was fun and I'll only do it on special occasions. No, you're like, where do I do that? How do I get that every day and where do I do it? So 
I used to just absolutely shellac some towels in my house to the point where I think my mom and dad, not I think, I know they noticed, because this one day, we only had two TVs in my home, one in the living room, one in my parents' room. My parents would often post up in the living room as a declaration of this is our house, fuck you. And then they would force our, us children to go into their bedroom on their cum covered sheets and watch whatever fucking dog shit we wanted to watch. So that's what I was doing. I was like 13, maybe 14, crime, crime wrist strength. Um, and I'm walking past them in the living room and I hear my mom go, Kevin, go tell him, go tell him. But I just had to continue marching, walk by, pretending not to hear that. Do you know how much that happened to me as a child where I would hear my parents say I was in trouble under their breath and then to unleash the other parent on me, but I just kind of pretend I didn't hear it and just walk by with blinders so that when they were like, Michael, we have to talk, I'd be like, well, about what? You're taking me by surprise. I wasn't expecting this confrontation. So that's what happened. My mom was like, Kevin, go tell him. And my dad marches into the room like a fucking Caucasian brontosaurus, just a fat ankled man stomping, just glasses of water shaking around me. And, um, and he goes, hey. I'm like, yeah? He's like, you gotta stop using the towels. I'm like, what, what do you mean? He's like, don't you need it? <laughs> that was my sex talk, that. Those syllables jammed together in a <laughs> He didn't want to get into it, and I get it, you know? He didn't want to tell me that, listen, stop laminating the towels. They don't need to pre be protected from the moisture. For the love of God, just blast it in some one ply. We'll even, that's what I would do actually. And that's what I will do. I just realized my parenting technique. I am going to get my son's tissues, jerk tissues. By that point, I'll probably be sponsored by jerktissue.com or something like that, promo code, two boys. <laughs> I do think that I'm gonna be that type of dad where it's like, hey man, I get it. I see what you're doing. It's totally normal. Spout off, bro. It's better than you going out there, becoming an insult, and then just fucking do, 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 do. most important dad in America. So whack it, get it out of your system. Stop being so vengeful and angry at your mother and I for not providing you with what you think is a necessity, and just go out in the world with a clear head, full eyes, clear heart, fart, can't lose. Uh, so I'm gonna get him jerk tissues because that was a humiliating experience. Not only to be called out by my father, but to basically be told that I'm doing something wrong. Stop jerking your dick, your mother and I know. And she doesn't like it. Maybe that's why I like stepmom porn so much, is I'm, I was wishing for an early, for an earlier divorce. I wish my parents split earlier. And then I could have been in, unleashed on a potential stepmom figure, which I actually think it would have been a battle between my dad and I. I think I might have been able to take him. I might have been one of those young bulls just walking around with a full piece. And the stepmom would be like, oh, wow, look at that. A newer upgraded version from your father. My dad would have dated somebody from Savannah, Georgia in this instance. Oh, that's what's craziest. My son, I just realized this, my son is, uh, is going into kindergarten. And that's when I got molested. Or I don't know if I got molested. I kind of molested my teacher, but in hindsight, it does feel as though she could have and should have put a stop to it. Oh, terrifying. So this is what happened. Story time here on TikTok. Let me let you know. So I was in kindergarten in Fort Montgomery, smoking hot teacher. She's about 24 years old, first year out of grad school, just a pu 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 piece. And I was five years old with a rock hard bone. I mean, I think that's when it first started coming. Not coming, but that's when the erection started happening involuntarily. And I was torqued to the gills. Just not an empty space in my dick, filled with blood to the max. I could have pushed a couch with my erection. And uh, I was really, high, you know, really into my teacher. And during story time, I used to massage her feet. That's right, I'd pop off her tooties and massage her feet in black, somewhat see-through stockings, and dear God, I'm filling up just thinking about it. But that's not cool, is it? I tried to even do it as a bit, as a ha-ha, look at what I did, aren't I kind of the man on stage? And then just like a hundred people were like, <laughs> you were molested, bro. That's five years old. How'd you feel? Like, in my mind, I've created the narrative that I'm like, no, I was like a five-year-old Casanova. I was like sucking on her pinky toe. Just really, I knew what I wanted at a young age. Even my parents cheered me on. Does that sound right? Um, now with, you know, time, with seeing just strangers' reactions, 
uh, I've, I've come to the conclusion that I was, uh, I, I am a victim. So, give me a Netflix special. Manic. 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 Episodes.